उन्होंने गजराज को जल से बाहर निकालने की बहुत चेष्टा की परंतु उसका उद्धार करने में समर्थ न सके महाराज चंदे महाराज परीक्षित इस प्रकार परस्पर युद्ध करते हुए कभी गजेंद्र ग्रह को बाहर लाता और कभी ग्रह गजेंद्र को जल के भीतर खींच लेता यह दिक्कत देवता भी आश्चर्य चकित हो गए Then he got saw them and became amazed also. How the elephant and the crocodile they were fighting. After a long time, being pulled inside the water, the elephant was feeling hopeless. He, he had lost his strength. So Gurudev is reading about Gajendra. So so the elephant it's good in the water, and on the point the crocodile was also um, he was biting the leg of the elephant. So he was drinking the blood of the elephant also, and slowly, slowly the elephant was losing all his strength. So, eighth canto, second chapter. What is the verse? Ekadis. Verse thirty-one, thirty-one, thirty-one. When the king of the elephants saw that he was under the clutches of the crocodile by the will of providence and being embodied and circumstantially helpless, could not save himself from danger. He was extremely afraid of being killed. He, consequ he cons consequent consequently thought for a long time and finally reached the following decision. So he thought, the other, verse 32, the other elephants who are my friends and relatives could not rescue me from this danger. What then to speak of my wives? They cannot do anything. It is by the will of providence that I have been attacked by this crocodile. And therefore, I shall seek shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is always the shelter of everyone, even of great personalities. So the elephant saw that was not possible to win over the uh, win the over the uh, crocodile. Wouldn't be possible for him to win. So what did he do? He surrendered to the feet of Bhagavan. He came to the shelter of Lord. Verse thirty three. Supreme God is certainly not known to everyone, but he is very powerful and influential. Therefore, although the serpent of eternal time, which is fearful in force, endlessly chases everyone, ready to swallow him, if one who fears the serpent seeks shelter of the Lord, the Lord gives him protection, for even death runs away in fear of the Lord. 
I therefore surrender unto him, the great and powerful supreme authority, who is the actual shelter of everyone. So now third canto, third chapter, sorry, third chapter. Eighth canto, third chapter. Gajendra's prayers of surrender. Shukadeva Goswami Pada told, Hey Parikit, Shukadeva Goswami continues, Thereafter, the king of the elephants, Gajendra, fixed his mind in his heart with perfect intelligence and chanted a mantra which he had learned in his previous birth, as in the Dhyumna, and which he remembered by the grace of Krishna. So, verse number 2, chapter 2, 8 canto. King of Elephants Gajendra said, I offer my respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Person Vasudev, Onamo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Because of him, this material body acts due to the presence of spirit, and he is therefore the root cause of everyone. He is worshipable for such exalted person as Brahma and Shiva, and he has entered the heart of every living, living being. Let me meditate upon him. Verse 3. The Supreme Godhead is the form on which everything rests, the ingredient by which everything has been produced, and the person who has created and is the only cause of this cosmic manifestation. Nonetheless, he is different from the cause and the results. I surrender unto him, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is self-sufficient in everything. I take shelter of him. What is going on with the Hindi? God. Some So in this way, Gajendra did so many prayers to Lord. Prayers. Praying. Namo Atma Pradeepa Satine Paramatmane Namo Girang Vidurayo Manasa Stetos Stetos Amupi Shloka number 10. Slok number 10. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the self-effulgent super soul, who is the witness in everyone's heart, who enlightens, enlightens the individual soul and who cannot be reached by exercises of the mind, words, or consciousness. So he made, they made a lot of prayers. There's a very nice verse. Slok number 20. 
And unloyed devotees who have no desire other than to serve the Lord, worship Him in full surrender, and always hear and chant abhis, which are most wonderful and auspicious. Thus, they always merge in an ocean of transcendental bliss. Such devotees never ask the Lord for any benedictions. I, however, am in danger. Thus, I pray to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is eternally existing, who is invisible, who is the Lord of all great personalities such as Brahma, and who is available only by the transcendental Bhakti Yoga. Being extremely subtle, he is beyond the reach of my senses and transcendental to all exter external realization. He is unlimited, he is the original cause, and he is completely full in everything. I offer my obeisances unto him. This prakar, Gajendra, so in this way, Gajendra was praying to Lord in many different ways, many prayers. He started praying. See, Sukha Vaja, Sushadev Gusain, Pat. Shukadev Goswami told Parikshit Maharaj, verse 30, 30, when the king of the elephants was describing the supreme authority without mentioning any particular person, he did not invoke the demigods headed by Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Indra and Chandra. Thus, none of them approached him. However, because Lord Hari is the super soul, Purushottama, the personality of Godhead appeared before Gajendra. Thirty-one. After understanding the awkward condition of Gajendra, who had offered his prayers, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, who lives everywhere, appeared with the demigods, who were offering prayers to him. Carrying his disc and other weapons, he appeared there on the back of his career, Garud, with great speed, according to his desire. Thus he appeared before Gajendra. Thirty-two. Gajendra had been forcefully captured by the crocodile in the water and was feeling acute pain. But when he saw that Narayana wielding his disc was coming in the sky on the back of Garuda, he immediately took a lotus flower in his trunk and with great difficulty Due to his painful condition, he uttered the following words, O oh my Lord, sorry, Narayana, Master of the Universe, O oh Supreme Personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. What did I say? Okay, so Gajendra saw he was about to die. Then what did he do? He, with his trunk, he took a lotus flower and then he offered to Bhagavan. Anantar, 
Thereafter, 33, seeing Gajendra in such a, a great position, they embarked some prim personality of Godhead Hari. Immediately got down from the back of Garuda by his causeless mercy and pulled the king of the elephants along with the crocodile of, out of the water. Then in the presence of all the demigods who were looking on, the Lord severed the crocodile's mouth from its body with his disc. In this way, he saves Gajendra, the king of the elephants. So Gajendra was delivered. So what is the previous life of Gajendra and why did God liberate him, delivered him? Next chapter, chapter 4. Shukadeva Goswami said, When Lord delivered Gajendra, king of the elephants, all the demigods, sages and Gandharvas, headed by Brahma and Shiva, praised this activity of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and showered flowers, flowers upon both the Lord and Gajendra. Verse 2, text 2. There was a beating of kettle drums in the heavenly planets, the inhabitants, sages and inhabitants of Charan Lok, and said the Loka offered prayers to the Supreme God, Purushottam. Next, 3-4 three, text. The best of Gandharvas, King Huhu, have been cursed by Devala Muni, had become a crocodile. Now, having been delivered by the Supreme God, so who was the crocodile in the previous life? Huhu, one best Gandharva, King Huhu. Now, having been delivered by the Supreme God, he assumed a very beautiful form as a Gandharva. Understanding by whose mercy this had happened, he immediately offered his respectful obeisances with his head and began chanting prayers just suitable for the transcendental Lord, the Supreme Eternal, who is worshipped by the choicest verses. Oh, no, I think Gurudev Gurudev is explaining, I think the commentary is not in the English one. So, how Huhu Gandharva was cursed? Did you understand? So, he was the Huhu Gandharva. The crocodile was... What happened was... Devala Rishi, one saint, was bathing and the Huhu Gandharva was like teasing him. Like was pulling his leg from under the water, you know? Like trying to, like a, like a little bit harassing him in the water. Like, so the saint cursed him, we will become a crocodile. So the um, Huhu did many prayers to the, to the saints, apologizing. He did prayers to Devaladishi, asking for forgiveness. Then Devaladishi said, okay, Bhagavan Sri Hari in Dwapara Jug will come. And he will free you, deliver you. So he got four, four arms. So Gajendra also. By the mercy of Bhagavan, he was delivered from the material world. He obtained Sayuja Mukti. Sayuja? Sorry, Swarupa, Swarupya Mukti. He got the same lord, form as Lord with four arms, Shankar, Chakra, Gada, and Padma. Pandavamsi was a king. His name was 
Gajendra had formerly been a Vaishnava and the king of the country known as Pandya, Pandya which is in the province of Dravir, Dravir, South India. In his previous life, he was known as Indradyumna Maharaj, text 7. His name was Indradyumna. King of a country known as Pandya. 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 Indradyum Maharaj, he was a king. Indradyum Maharaj retired from family life and went to the Malaya Hills where he had a small cottage for his ashram. He wore matted locks on his head and always engaged in austerities. Once, while observing a vow of silence, he was fully engaged, engaged in the worship of the Lord and absorbed in the ecstasy of love of Godhead. While Indradumna Maharaj was engaged in ecstatic meditation, Worship the Supreme God. The great sage Agastya Muni arrived there, surrounded by his disciples. When the Muni saw that Maharaj Indradumna, who was sitting in a secluded place, remained silent and did not follow the etiquette of offering him a reception, he was very angry. So once Agastya Rishi came to his ashram, which ashram? Indradumna was performing austerities. The austerities to be in silence. I will not speak to anyone. He was completely focused, worshipping God, and he was absorbed in Bhagavad. So in this moment, Agastarishi came with his disciples. He came to the ashram of Indradumna, and they saw that Maharaj Indradumna was sitting, and he remained silent and did not follow the etiquette of offering him a reception. So Agastamuni he became very angry. So Agastarishi was angry with Indradumna Maharaj. Agastarishi, angry, he cursed the king. Oh, this king, the Indradumna, is not at all gentle. Being low and uneducated, he has insulted a Brahmana. May he therefore enter the region of darkness and receive the dull, dull, dumb body of an elephant. My dear king, after Agastya Muni had thus cursed King Indradumna, the Muni left that place along with his disciples. Since the king was a devotee, he accepted Agastya Muni's curse as welcome because it was the desire of God. Therefore, although in his next life he got the body of an elephant, because of the devotional service, he remembered how to worship and offer praise to the Lord. Upon delivering the king of the elephants from the clutches of the crocodile and from material existence, which resembles a crocodile, the Lord awarded him the status of Sarupya Mukti. So, Jagadana offered prayers. God killed the crocodile and delivered Gajendra. Both of Lord. How? I told his previous life, he was the king Indradumna. He left everything and he went to the jungle and he was completely absorbed in doing bhajan and worshipping the deity. Once Agastarishi came there and he did not give honor to Agastarishi, so Agastarishi cursed him. He should become an elephant. Then Indradumna Maharaj later he regretted, he took hold of the feet of the Rishi, Agastarishi Muni, and he was crying. 
please deliver me from the body of an elephant. Then Nagasari Shri told, look, Bhagavan himself will come and will deliver you. So by the mercy of Agastari Shri, Bhagavan in the presence of the Gandharvas, the Siddhas and other demigods were praising the Lord. The Lord, sitting on the back of his career, Garuda, returned to all his wonderful abode and took Gajendra with him. Verse 14. My dear King Parikshit, I have now described the wonderful power of Krishna as displayed when the Lord delivered the king of the elephants. Oh, those who hear this narration become fit to be promoted to the higher planetary systems. Simply because of hearing this narration, they gain a reputation. As devotees, they are unaffected by the contamination of Kali Yuga and they never see bad dreams. Text 15. Therefore, after getting up from bed in the morning, those who desire their own welfare, especially Brahmana Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and in particular the Brahmanas Vaishnavas, should chant this narration as it is, without deviation, to counteract the troubles of bad dreams. So what is the fruit if you read the Gajendra Moksha Lila? All your uh, material bondage will be automatically destroyed. Bhagavan told 17.24 God said, freed from all sinful reactions are those who rise from bed at the end of the night, early in the morning, and fully concentrate their minds with great attention upon my form, your form. This lake, this mountain, the cage, the gardens, the cane plants, the bamboo plants, the celestial trees, the residential quarters of me, Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva, the three peaks of Trikurta mountain, made of gold, silver and iron, my very pleasing abode, the ocean of milk, the white island, Shatadweep, which is always brilliant with spiritual rays, my mark of Srivatsa, the cost of gem, my Janti garden, my club, my Sudarshana and Panchajai Konchal, my Bhaira Garuda, the king of the birds, my bad, Sheshnag, my expansion of energy, of God. <laughs> sorry, my expansion of energy, the goddess of fortune, Lord Brahma, Narada Muni, Lord Shiva, Pralada, my incarnations like Matsya, Kurman, Baraha, my unlimited auspicious activities which yield piety and to he who hears them, the sun, the moon, fire, the mantra, Omkara, the absolute truth, the total who are all daughters of King Daksha, the river Ganges, Saraswati, Nanda, and Jamuna, the elephant Airabat, Dhruva Maharaj, the seven rishis, and the pious human beings. Shukadeva Goswami continued, after giving the instruction, the Lord, who is known as Rishikesh, buggled with his Panchajai Koncha, Panchajanya Koncha, in this way, pleasing all the dummy gods, headed by Lord Brahma, then he mounted the back of his career, Guru. He went to his abode. Brahma 
Now, chapter 5. The demigods appeal to the Lord for, perfect, for, for protection. Então, sexto capítulo. Então, vai falar agora sobre a batedura do oceano. Então, acabou a libertação de Gajendra. Agora vamos falar sobre o capítulo 6. Não, capítulo 8. Espera aí, qual capítulo? Batedura do Sano de Leite. Sasta é o sexto. Sexto capítulo 6. Oh my God, sorry. Sixth, sixth chapter. Chapter 6. Eight Canto Bhagavatam, chapter 6. Sometimes what happens? By the influence of the time, 
the demons they become so powerful they become very powerful the demons sometimes so then indra and the demigods they become like uh, less powerful so once what happened was sorry the demigods and the demons they were had a fight demigods were defeated and the demons they won So after that, what happened? Demigods, they got eligibility to Swarga, and the, the demigods, demons went to Swarga, and demigods lost the eligibility of Swarga. They were wandering here and there. Then demigods made a friendship, and so everything in Vaikuntha. So let's do one thing. Let's uh, turn the ocean and let's get all these transcendental things again and establish in Swarga. This Dibya, like these divine things, and let's establish in Swarga. So let's uh, turn the ocean. So this was the th uh, conception of the demigods, the idea of the demigods and, and demons, and the demons. Bhagavan Shihari told the demigods the time is very powerful because of the time, the influence of the time. Now the demons are very powerful. So you should not fight with them. You should not quarrel with them. And instead, you should bring them and turn the ocean. So if you had to do some great thing, you have to make friendship even with your enemy to do that thing, to have it, to have it done. So I, one story, it's being told here. What is the story? There was Nick Charmer who he put his a snake inside his pot. You know, like a, like a pot where the snake kept, and the snake couldn't come out. Who is the enemy of the snake? The red. So, the um, snake charmer, he kept that snake inside that pot. And he also put a rat inside the pot so as to, for the snake to eat the rat. Snake thought, if I eat just this rat, my still I will not, I won't be full. My belly won't be full. The snake was thinking. So yes, the rat is my enemy. The mouse, like the rat, is my enemy. But today, the mouse, mouse, sorry, the mouse, like small rat, I, is my generally my enemy, my food. But today, I'll make friendship with this mouse. If I make, if I'll be friends with this mouse, then I'll be able to come out of this. So, when the mouse came to the um, basket, snake told mouse, Oh, I'll not eat you. Let's do, be friends. And with your sharp teeth, please, uh, how to say, um, you open this. 
basket with your sharp teeth. You mix a hole, then we'll be, both of us will be saved, isn't it? So sometimes, even you have to uh, rather, rather. So you have sometimes make friendship with your enemy. Stir, stir this basket, and then we can go out. So sometimes you make friendship with your enemy. Text 22, chapter 6. Demigods cast into the ocean of milk all kinds of vegetables, grass, creepers, and drugs. Then, with my help, making Mandara Mountain the churning rod and Vasuki the rope for churning, churn the ocean of milk with undiverted attention. Thus, the demons will be engaged in labor, but you, the demigods, will gain the actual result the nectar produced from the ocean. So Bhagavan told you lost Swarga and now the, the demons are in charge of Swarga but so make a friendship with your enemy once again Stay friends with your enemy. There's a beautiful example in the Bhagavatam. The example of the snake and the mouse. Who is the food of the snake? The mouse. Small, small mouse. So, the mouse told, you cut through this basket and you can let us go from here. You can let us out. The mouse thought, if I will stay here anyway, I'll die anyway. So the more I can continue living, it will be better. So the mouse decided to make friends with friend, friendship with the snake. And like in good terms with the snake, then once the snake told, do one thing. You cut through this uh, basket, you'll be able to come out and me also. So Red thought, the mouse thought, after I make a hole in this basket, the snake will go to another place, so okay. So the mouse, with his sharp teeth, he cut the basket. He made a hole in the basket. The snake was actually hungry for many days. So when they came out, the snake saw the mouse and then the snake caught the mouse, ate him, killed him and ate him. Who? The snake. What is the meaning? What's the meaning of telling this story? What's the significance of this story? Sometimes, when you want to fulfill some desire, you have some to fulfill some, you know, some something you, you know, if you have to do something, have some, you must, ha you have to have something done. Then sometimes you need to make friendship, even with your enemy, to get that thing done. So the demigods they were turning the ocean. So Bhagavan came in the form of Kurma Vatar and they started churning. Sura, no, some 
What is the path to to the peace? To the... So the path to the peace is the you have to make friendship with the enemy. So Bhagavan said, This I told her how to make peace, how to make friendship with the demons. Actually, Gurudev didn't finish the sentence. He would have said, the path to the peace is demon, then he didn't say actually, so you can delete that translation. So do one thing. Turn the ocean. And share what is coming out from the ocean. This will be good. Don't know which local Guru Dev is reading on. So Shkadev Goswami is saying, Hey Maharaj Parikit. So the Thereafter, with great strength, the demons and demigods who were all very powerful and who had long stout arms uprooted Mandara Mountain. Crying very loudly, they brought it toward the ocean of milk. At that time, probably there was no crane. You know, the crane taking things here and there. And also the mountain was very big. So how they would take the mountain in that time? Just uprooting and taking. A thousand gods together. They uprooted the Mandara mountain and brought to the ocean. The mountain known as Mandara, which is like, was extremely heavy, being made of gold, fell and smashed many demigods and demons. Because of conveying the great mountain for a long distance, King Indra Maharaj Bali and the other demigods and demons became fatigated, being unable to carry the mountain, they left it on the way. Observing that most of the demons, 37, and the demigods had been crushed by the falling of the mountain, the Lord glanced over them and brought them back to life. Thus they became free from grief and they even had no bruises on their bodies. So Bhagavan appears as like the tor tor turtle.
So Bhagavan appears in the form of a turtle, Kurma Sarir. And on the back of the turtle, they put that mountain and started churning the ocean. So, in term, so they didn't use the Mandar mountain, they used the back of the turtle, Bhagavan. So when they started churning the ocean, God was also pleased because he was feeling some itching on his back. Here he's saying, now this kata is described nice huh? so verse 10 chapter 7 explaining how uh, the kurma liked because he was feeling a pleasant sensation when he was, they were scratching his body so I got now Gurudev is saying another thing. So when Rama was in the forest, Bharata Satraguna they came and they wanted to crown Ram and make him the king. But Ram told, I want to follow the words of my father, so I came in the forest, I'll stay in the forest. And finally, when Ramachandra was not giving in, Bharat he took the Sandal, wooden sandal, sandals of Ram Chandra and came with those sandals on his head. So there is one story about this kata, something. Bharat, why did he bring this sandal woods? Sandal woods, no, sorry, not sandal woods. The sandals, sandals, wood sandals of Ram. He kept that on the, on his throne, on the throne on Ayodhya, at Ayodhya. And Bharata was uh, actually uh, um, ruling Ayodhya, but actually who was on the throne was the the sandal wood sandals of Ram. So who is this sandal wood sandals? The Pandita said this very interesting story. Who was these wood sandals? These like shoes, wood sandals. So there are two stories maybe.
Ainda vai contar a world. There was a seva of Bhagavan. Ainda vai contar. So when Bhagavan sits on the throne, he has the duty to clean the throne. And before Bhagavan comes, he has to prepare the throne for God. Forgot the name of the servant. So once, two servants of the king, the servants of Bhagavan Vishnu, they were cleaning the throne of Bhagavan Sri Vishnu. Cleaning, once they started thinking, this throne is so so they thought oh I also want to sit on this throne but how because that is the throne of Prabhu of the master how to see how possible to sit and also in the Vaikuntha world but they had this mood this feeling me too I also want to sit down on the throne of Prabhu, of the Lord. They had this desire. I want to see how soft is this. I, w I want to feel how soft is this throne. Bhagavan Shihari knew what they were feeling in their hearts. Okay, my servants. In Dwapara Jug, wood sandal woods, wood sandals. You will be my wood sandals. Sorry, not Dapara Yuga, and Treta Jug. You will be born as my wood sandals. So when Bhagavan Ram was doing pastimes in Treta Jug, these two servants were born as the wood sandals of Ram. And Bharata brought those wood sandals and put on the throne of the wood sandals. The story is there. Another story is that so Bhagavan has many like doorkeepers and bodyguards. You know, Jai Vijay, they're one of them. Like some doorkeepers, but Bhagavan has many bodyguards. And then Narada came to meet Vishnu and his two bodyguards. They didn't allow Narada to see Bhagavan. And told, oh, Bhagavan Vishnu, now he's taking rest and like this and that. And then Narada Rishi was very upset. I came from far to see the feet of Bhagavan. And the servants, they have uh, like finished my hope to, to see God. Like they didn't allow me to see God. So Narada Rishi, he cursed the servants. Both of you should be born as trees. to this world there was a king called Raghu in Najudha when he was ruling the kingdom someone before the kings would they would use wood sandals so a person wanted to give to the king some gifts of wood a wood sandal gift so he cut these two trees they were sandalwood trees up actually and then he made the wood sandals out of it and he gave to Raghu the king and Raghu he was Trikalaga he knew past present and future so he 
didn't use that sandal wood, sorry, wood sandal, he kept on his throne, like, or up. He didn't wear. So the wood sandal thought, I'm, what is my use, my benefit, if I'm not being used by the king? So the king told them, I'll actually, I'll put you sitting on the throne. Rago thought, but Rago dies later. And later, so many kings came in his dynasty, in, in the Rago dynasty. Finally, Dasharatha Maharaj came. Dasharatha Maharaj also didn't use the wood sandals. Only Bhagavan Shahari could put his feet. So that wood sandals Bharat took to, for Lord, to Lord, for Ram in Chantra, Chitrakut. Where Bhagavad Ramachandra was there, Bharat brought. So later Bharat brought this, cup, no, this pair of wood sandals, wooden sandals, wooden sandals. So for 14 years, these wooden sandals remained on the throne of Ayodhya. So the meaning behind this is that if you analyze all the pastimes of Lord, mainly they are there because of some curse of some Rishi. This is what I want to say. So to um, turn the ocean of milk, you need a rope. Who would be this rope? The Vasuki. Some problem in the Hindi. So Lakshman saw from far that Bharata was coming when Rama and Lakshman they went to Kut. Then Lakshman. So this um, rage, this anger of Lakshman came from where? This has some relation with a previous life. 
because, because Lakshman was the Shesh avatar. Yeah. At that time, Lakshman said, "Oh, I like he wanted to." Avatar. So Garur takes who? The Shesh. So the enemy is sitting on his back. Guru and the snake, they are always fighting. You know the story about Kadru and Binata? Do you know the story or not? Kashapri, she had one wife, Kadru, Kadru another Binata. Binata. Son of Kadru were the snakes. And Binata had two sons. One Arun, and Garudji. So Garuda always was fighting with the snakes. Vishnu sleeps on the snake, Sheshnag. Once what happened? They were fighting who? Always who? Gorudad and the snakes. But now Jogamaya gave it. Order what? Guru, you have to take the snake on top, like on on your back. Then Guru brought him it, I don't know, on his back, and they came to the ocean. All this is described in the shastras. Okay, so there was a meeting of Ram and Bharat. Then Ramachandra gave these wooden sandals to Bharat. And Bharat, for 14 years, he was. He kept these wooden sandals on his throne. Many stories of the Puranas, and one story is connected to another one. So where is the Mandara mountain? What is his previous life, history? Because all the Shasta and the Puranas, they connected. There are many mountains. So why they took specifically this mountain? Later I'll tell the story. So about like for example these wooden sandals. There's a the story there in the Puranas. How did it become uh, the wooden sandals of Lord? And for 14 years, sat on the throne. So these wooden sandals, 
used to tell many things to Bharat and give him many realizations. Like if sometimes Bharata would not be able to decide something, then Bharata would <clears throat> consult the wooden sandals. The wooden sandals would give many, a lot of advice and realizations to Bharat. Okay, so tomorrow I continue speaking about this. It's already 8 a.m. Duarati, that's Duarati. Why the crocodile was liberated first? So he could hold the lotus feet of Vaishnav. Then he would be first delivered. <laughs> huh? Or is a crocodile case? If you not and to deliver the crocodile, a crocodile how the present will free from the bondage the mouth of crocodile. This is the thing. Eh? Ashram. Bhajan. Isle Bhajanam ke charan pakad kar rakho. So Bhagawan tumhi pahili udhar kar dehi. So if you hold the feet of the devotee, Lord will deliver you first. Let's do it. Let's go.